folks, I've got a question for you. Who here is actively building their personal brand? Okay, so about 50% of the audience. So for those that do or are actively building their personal brand, my talk will reinforce or likely reinforce a number of the fundamentals that you have in place. And for those that don't, I will be one, explaining the power of personal branding, and two, to provide you with a framework that I believe can really help you. Before delving into personal branding, I think it's important that we take a step back to see and understand what a brand is. A brand, in my view, can be many things. This can range from sports teams, like the greatest football team in the world. Manch Thank hey, anyone a Liverpool supporter? Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I've yeah, never heard of them. If, we think <laughs> <laughs> if you think of a sports team, it comprises of players, coaches, management, sponsors, and critically fans. They constitute an ecosystem. If we were to think about a business offering products or services, like Crocs, who else owns a pair of Crocs here? This is a safe space. Yes. My family want to disown me because I own Crocs, but just yeah, keep standing strong. Places, monuments, tourist attractions can be brands. And critically, people can be brands. Oprah, to my mind, has one of the most wonderful personal brands. Loving, yet strong. Motherly, yet kind. And has done phenomenally well as an entrepreneur. And critically for you to start thinking about yourself as a brand and taking your personal brand seriously. Tom Peters, the renowned management strategist, puts this forward. We are CEOs of our own companies, me incorporated. To be in business today, our most important job is to be the head marketer for the brand called you. We need to be thinking about ourselves as the captains of our ship and how we are marketing ourselves. What is that projecting? What is that saying? We need to curate and take control of that. And some statistics that I think you'll find fascinating and, and likely will align with. According to Nielsen, 88% of consumers trust recommendations from people they know above all other forms of marketing. Oh, do we ask our friends and family? Absolutely. The question here is, is your name coming up? Yeah, I know that was quite heavy, sorry about that. <laughs> That's why I'm here speaking about personal branding. That is personal branding. If you're looking for a dermatologist, does your name come up? Or a plumber? Or a life coach? We need to be thinking about ourselves as, well, having a personal brand. According to Edelman, 45% of decision makers use thought leadership content to vet organizations they may do business with. Two points on this. One, do you have a digital presence? And two, are you adding value? Are you positioning yourself as a subject matter expert that you're the specialist? Because that's gonna draw people in. That's personal branding. And thirdly, according to Trustpilot, 89% of global consumers say checking online reviews is part of their buying journey. Who here will go on to a, a company's Facebook page and look at the reviews? Most of us. The renowned or globally renowned brand strategist Marty Numa famously said, it's not what you said is, it's what they said is. It's not what you said is, it's what they said is. So it's what is your consumer saying about you? So we need to, be, we'll need to think about what is that a customer experience like? And what this really points to is, particularly within a digital realm, the absolute explosion in digital. We all are on our phones. We watch a movie, we're on our phones. Well, we are driving, not all of us, but we have seen people <laughs> on their phones. That's where we are. And we need to be thinking about that digital presence. So what I'd like to share with you is a framework that I've developed to help you start building your personal brand. It comprises of four components. The first is identity. So your identity is your brand makeup. It's your DNA. And it underpins key concepts or, or components such as your vision. So what is that future state for yourself in both a professional and personal capacity? Your goals. And I came across quite a nice way of thinking about goals. We're all familiar with short, medium, and long term. As horizons, one, two, and three. And to reverse engineer that to say, well, 
what do I want my future state to look like? And what are the steps in place that I need to have? What do those benchmarks look like? That either I am meeting, exceeding, or under, and what do I need to refine? So with your identity, it includes your value proposition. So if you were to flip that, that's the proposed value to your audience. To think and to be really empathetic, what are they going through? And what distinguishes you? Why should they choose you over the competitor set? So that's your value prop or proposition. It also includes your value set. What do you stand for? And that's very much the intangible components that I've spoken to, through to tangible, the way in which we project ourselves, the way in which we dress, how we speak, what we say, our body language. So if you can lock down on your brand identity, it's gonna offer you guardrails in terms of your behavior and what you market around yourself. Your audience, is the second piece to that. Who are you relative to your audience? Who is that core group of consumers you wanna build a working relationship with? Who is that A-grade customer or client that pays you on time, that respects you, and actions your advice or uses your product? Anyone in the audience have an A-grade client? Probably not many, a few. It's a wonderful place to be. We need more of those. That's where the value of segmentation comes in. So who are you speaking to? What are they experiencing? What are those pain points, those aspirations, obstacles? You really wanna be empathetic. Who are they? Where do they live? What social media or, or media channels do they consume? And how could you be relevant, relevant on those platforms? So the clearer you can understand your audience, the better you can market and nuance your message. So that's the second piece. The third is a roadmap. So your roadmap effectively is you're clear on who you are and what you're about. We know who we want to speak to and your roadmap closes that gap. And a way in which you can think about that is to break it down into online and offline. So online, I'm referring to digital. This ranges from your website, your blog, your social channels. Who's on TikTok here? Oh, you go down a rabbit hole if you're on TikTok. The algorithm is frighteningly <laughs> dangerous. We really want to think about what are those platforms and what does our audience consume. Offline can include interpersonal, meeting a prospect over coffee, whether it be giving a talk, being a panelist, doing or giving a pitch. You want to think about where your audience is and how can you occupy those key spaces. So that's really what your roadmap looks like. Where are your consumers? What you also want to attach is what is known as a CTA. So your CTA is your call to action. It's that desired next step or nudge that you want your prospect to do. Is it to follow you on a on said social channel? Is it to book a consult with you or visit your website? So, you, so often I see individuals not including that facet in their communication. So you're offering a lot of value, but you're not telling them what to do next. So that is essentially a key uh, element. And the last piece under roadmap is you want to assign what is known as metrics. So what that is effectively is a way of measuring the efficacy or the success of your marketing. So to say, well, if, if leads and sales are important to you, I think most of us that will apply, what, do, what are those metrics? Is it to drive traffic to your website? How long are people staying on your website? Are they inquiring? So that's effectively some of the ways in which you wanna think about metrics. And then the last one, folks, is to iterate. Building your personal brand takes time. To my mind, it's your greatest investment because you're drawing people in. You're building an audience. You're building trust. And that has a direct correlation to business growth. And some examples that I'd like to share with you, so folks that I believe really are incorporating this framework really effectively. Neil Patel, I will say up front, I do have a bit of a man crush on him. I am happily married, but... <laughs> He, sorry, I thought, well, there was a lot funny in my mind um, <laughs> rehearsing this. He is one of, if you type in Neil Patel into Google, he is the globally renowned digital marketer. He has done amazingly well in business and he's made a lot of money and yet he is so humble. A key audience for him are marketers of Fortune 500 companies. And his agency is one of the top performing agencies in the US. He is phenomenally generous with the content that he's sharing. Key takeout, who is your audience? 
Another example is Christo from the future, which is a platform. He's not, so that's, he's not from the future, he's present. Uh, again, in my mind, that made sense. Um, I, I think I needed to clarify that. Very generous with his content. His audience are um, largely entrepreneurs. And he gives advice on how to start a business, how to, price, how to price your products or services, how to deal with difficult customers. Again, he knows his audience and he's empathetic. Dr. Moyo, another example, a globally renowned economist from Zambia. She sits on boards like Chevron and Barclays. She gives talks around the world on policy. And again, she knows her stuff. She's phenomenally generous. So you, the takeout here is, one, know your audience, but two, what can you offer? What do you know a lot about that will speak to a pain point or aspiration of your audience? The second to last example is Nozipo Shabalala, a South African lady, and she describes herself as a conversation strategist, which I absolutely love. She does a lot of emceeing and facilitation work. And if you follow her on the likes of LinkedIn and Instagram, her trajectory, folks, has been incredible. She's now emceeing and facilitating conversations for the UN. Yes, the UN and BRICS. And she knows what her personal brand is about. It doesn't necessarily have to cost you money to build your brand. It's about locking down on your value set and being clear on your roadmap. So that's really the key takeout. And the last example, but certainly not least, Skulk Bezadenhout. South African comedian, we all know him. I mean, just the way he dresses, <laughs> it's deliberate. He stands out relative to his competitor set with those florally shirts and the jersey. You can see that his grandmother probably knitted and his Casio watch, it's distinct. And how, I don't know if any of you follow him on social media, but certainly on the likes of uh, Instagram, and I'm gonna butcher this, hello Mensa, and he does that you know, thing with his mustache, but he draws you in. Sorry if you ever see the skulk, um, the point is I have referenced you. He's got a warmth to him. What is your personality? What are you bringing to the table? So my key message, folks, is to build your personal brand. It's accessible. You could do this. And my parting question to you is, are you ready to start building your personal brand? Thank you.